on our way to the site of the Virginia Tavern. There I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Spiro Brothers getting shot there one night. Virginian Tavern. Back in 1978, three masked men burst in from the back parking lot to the back door. They looked to their left, they saw two of the Spiro brothers, Joe and Mike Spiro, sitting at a table. Two of the men peeled off to the left and just started shooting at them. They killed Mike and wounded Joe. The third man had a shotgun and he saw Carl Spiro leaving the payphone up by the front door and running out. He chased him out across the street, Admiral Boulevard, right here in front, and popped him as he got across the street. He, he paralyzed him from the waist down. He would be in a wheelchair the rest of his life. Three men got away. One of the brothers, Joe Spiro, was killed in a accidental bombing, or maybe it was a uh, intentional bombing. Anyhow, a bomb went off. Uh, looked like it might have been an accident. And it killed him and he left a letter and in that letter the next day his relatives sent it to the Kansas City Star and they named Tuffy DeLuna as the man with the shotgun who ran across the street and crippled Carl. He named Charlie Martina and Joe Ragusa as the two men who ran to their table and wounded Joe who is now dead and killed Mike. Well, let's take a look at the site of the Virginia Tavern. Damn that helmet's hot. All right. Somebody asked for Spiro Brothers and I said I was gonna do it, so here we are. Not very exciting, it's that vacant lot over there. I think what's, uh, you just have to visualize, first of all, see this apartment building right across the street. We once rented that second floor apartment and sat for a month watching across the street to the Virginia Tavern. Virginia Inn, I can't remember which, or the Virginian, or something like, I think the Virginia Tavern. Frankie Tadero ran it, and uh, he, uh, uh, Carl Sparrow liked to hang out there, and all of his brothers did, so one night, all three of them were in there, and the call went out to somebody. Well, we kind of know who was uh, Tuffy DeLuna and Joe Ragusa, and I can't remember the third guy. Uh, 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 so uh, the three brothers were all down there, uh, Carl, was talking to his attorney up at the bar, a guy named Danny Matula, who still practices law. I had a case uh, on the opposite side from him not too long ago, about four or five years ago. And Joe and Mike were sitting at the table. And Mike Sparrow, he was a Teamsters official who wanted, uh, who thought he should have a more important job with the Teamsters. So the Savellas were mad at the, I mean, the Sparrow brothers were mad at the Savellas over that. Just felt like they'd been disrespected by the family. And they're all sitting around the bar, and the call's gone out that all three of them are down there. Uh, Carl was on the phone with a couple other people, a couple of our intelligence unit detectives were driving down the street, driving down Admiral Boulevard here, and they saw Carl. The, the payphone was right by the front door. We had given up this apartment by then. We'd watched enough to identify all of the players that were coming and going. So they saw Carl on his payphone just inside the front door, and they kept on going up the street several blocks, and then a call came out, shots fired at the Virginia Tavern. Turned around and come back, and, and right about, oh, right about there at that corner, Carl Sparrow had ran out the front door. The, uh, the three guys, three masked men with a shotgun and two pistols came in the back door of the tavern in the back parking lot about where that white car's sitting came in the back door, two of them broke off to the left because they saw Joe and Mike sitting at the table uh, and just started shooting at them and uh, killed, Car killed Mike and wounded Joe. The other one uh, with the shotgun, who I think speculation is it was Tuffy DeLuna, the underboss, he saw Carl and Carl saw him at the, at the uh, Carl was close to the front door and he broke and ran out the front door and was running across Admiral Boulevard when Carl brought him down with the shotgun with double off buck. Uh, uh, it, it crippled Carl. He, he was in a wheelchair. He was paraplegic. 
the rest of his life. They got him a few years later uh, with a bomb. I could run down, that's only about two or three minutes from here. I'll run down by the bomb site where they bombed him at the very end, and that was the end of the, the Spiro Savella War. Uh, but it, but from the time Carl was put in the wheelchair, it got real hot after that. They were trying to kill each other constantly. We, that was part of my job back then, was just to follow Carl Spiro around and try to catch some of the Savella families, their hitmen, trying to stalk him and, and add to probable cause for future wiretaps and search warrants and, and, and that kind of a thing. A lot of police work's not all that exciting. It's mainly just watching and waiting and writing down stuff and then putting it together. So that's uh, that's a crime scene there, and and this is where if we just kept that apartment another month or two, we would uh, witness the crime scene maybe. So hang on and let's uh, let's head on over to the little uh, used car lot where Carl Savella got killed. The final story for the Savella or the Spiro family. Here we are at the Carl Spiro bombing site. This was a, uh, see up in there, there was, there was like kind of a square patch by those barrels. That was a little shack right up there. And it was used car lots. That was a used car lot. Used cars sitting all over that lot. And he'd pull back up in through this back fence here. This wasn't here either and up in his parking lot and get out and get his wheelchair and he had a ramp that went in there. And so somebody was sitting probably, probably right up the street there maybe, or maybe over here, because they watched him do it. They determined later his remote control bomb is sitting underneath the uh, uh, little st office, the, the shack that they used for an office that he was going into. This is customer parking for Shady Lady, that's a, uh, strip club there so you know that all the strip clubs have some kind of connections that mob are always interested in strip clubs and and I can't remember you know I tell you what I had just gotten promoted to sergeant and I didn't pay any attention to the investigation I was too busy trying to uh, be a sergeant so uh, fun tour of Kansas City well you're mighty welcome there Joel Francis I see uh, Casey McBride's finally on the air. What are you doing, Casey? Out there in Portland. I don't know what time it is. We're doing this a little earlier for our friends from England, David Breakspear and some of the others. I just did a little tour of some different crime scenes and told some, you know, the story of that. And what I didn't tell is, is the story of myself over there at the, uh, some of you guys have heard this, over there at the Virginia Tavern. Uh, we were watching Carl Sparrow at the Virginia Tavern. This was after he was in a wheelchair, after they made the attempt on him and he's in there by himself he's in there for quite some time and we see Joe Ragusa driving around the block and he doesn't see us and he left and we find out later from the FBI that he got on a phone and called Cork Savell and said he's down at the Virginian right now by himself we can do it and and Corky says Are, did you see any agents around and and Joe says didn't see anybody at all there's nobody around he's by himself we need to go do it right now Cork says, uh, well, he said, you know, if you didn't see agents, that probably means they're there. And, and which we were there. Uh oh, there goes one of the strippers in. I don't know, I probably shouldn't, we probably can't really make out her face, but she's going to work. A little interesting sidelight here, a little, the, the gritty, seamy underbelly of Kansas City. So I digress. Uh, uh, we just sit there, we call down at the FBI office and we say, hey, uh, uh, Joe Ragusa was smelling around the Virginia Tavern and Carl Spiro's down there and they said, well, I said, just, just get a little closer and watch and make sure nothing doesn't, uh, nothing doesn't happen since we're on it and they know about it. Pretty soon a car comes back that we don't recognize and the car makes that block several times and, and I don't remember, I was there and I think Nick and a couple other guys and we radio each other and say, well, we, we better move in a little closer here. Somebody's trying to get on the uh, payphone to call in the FBI office and say, oh, it looks like something might be going down. And as I moved in, I drove by the front of the Virginian about the time they came out from the side of it, and they pulled in behind me. So I go west about a half a block where, the, where I just came from there, actually. 
about a half a block and I take a right and they stay behind me and they stay behind me and we go south about five blocks to the first traffic light and I catch a red light and there's, they pull up to the left and I just sit there and I look straight ahead waiting for the light like, oh, here's John Doe Citizen. Of course, here I am, a 20-something, uh, a, a 28, 25 to 30-year-old white guy and it was a slick car, but uh, just, you know, just kind of prowling around that neighborhood and and, and I glance over finally as the light changes and there's Tuffy just staring at me and, and he just gives me a little half a grin and they take a left and I'm already committed to go straight and when they took a left they were long gone we never saw them again we were frantically trying to get a district car down there uniform car to stop them with you know somebody's got red lights we didn't really want to try to run them off the road or you know get right in front of them and jump out and say hey you know who are you because they might not believe we're the police and there might be some kind of a shootout. We, we, had, we were trying to get the uniforms guy, guys down to, to, to do this. Uh, real life isn't like TV again. But uh, So uh, that's gonna, I think that's going to be the end of my Facebook Live of crime scenes today. You got to see a real life stripper going into work at the Shady Lady and you got to see, uh, you got to see where bombing was. You got to see where somebody was killed, where they found their body. and where the River Key War started and what it was started about. And you know the River Key War, and that's what led to uncovering the skim in Las Vegas. Had that not happened, that skim might have gone on for years and years and years, no telling how. No, nobody else was on to it, but Kansas City FBI was on to it early on. And I'm always proud to say I was part of that. So, signing off now for a gangland wire. Give me another last shot of that beautiful T-shirt.